here's an example of looking at derivatives and linear approximations for a function of two variables with um, various perspectives and various notation. Since we're kind of mixing these two books, I want to make sure we have at least a little familiarity with both notations. The function, um, I'm really kind of pulling this out of uh, the Stewart book, the handouts, page 899, number 4. Um, there's our function, and I want to look near the point 1, 4. Uh, x equals 1, y equals 4. And I want to find the linear approximation, and I want to talk about derivatives and, and differentials and all kinds of good stuff. Okay, So the main calculation tool is the partial derivatives, and so that's going to be y over x, and fy is just ln x. And so at the point in question, this is very much like uh, the tangent line for one variable, where you only really care about this at one point. We don't care about this as a function. Uh, we just care about it at one point. So we're going to plug in x equals 1, y equals 4, and so we get 4 here, and fy of 1, 4 is um, just 0. And so the first thing we could write down is the equation of the tangent plane. It's one way to interpret what this data gives us, and that is z is, I'll write down the general formula. You look at the height at the base point where you're interested in, then you look at the x derivative at that point, that's going to be this guy, times x minus x naught, plus the y derivative times y minus y naught. Remember, these parentheses mean evaluate this function at this point, and then these parentheses are just to group that and do times let me exaggerate that or emphasize that. And similarly, these parentheses mean very different from these parentheses. So here, oh, hey, I need f of x naught, y naught. Hmm. Let's see. f of 1, 4. Well, that's 4 times ln 0. That's 0. 0 plus 4x minus, and then x naught is 1, plus 0, y minus y naught. So you get a very simple equation, 4x, uh, 4 times x minus 1, or 4x minus 4 if you want. But to be honest, it's really, a lot of the time, it's better to keep these groups, x minus 1 and y minus 1, because remember, they have a, a meaning. These are delta x and delta y. Okay, so let me remind you of the picture here, now that we've got an example to talk about. Uh, I'm not going to sketch this exact example, but if we have our surface, and we have a point in the plane, and we go up and, and look at what the surface looks like near the plane, uh, near the point, rather. We want the equation of that plane. And what we want to think about it, that's our base point. That's really home base, not the origin. The origin isn't very special for us. What's interesting and, and uh, familiar is this point, x naught, y naught, here. And so if I go a little away from that in the x direction or the y direction, I want to know how much this changes, how, how much am I sloping upward or downward on the plane. And so um, what I'm most interested in is how far did I go in the x direction, delta x from the base point, how far did I go in the y direction, delta y from the base point. So it actually makes a lot of sense to leave it like that, even though somebody might say, well, why didn't you just multiply it out? So that's one interpretation, is it's a geometric interpretation. It's the equation of the tangent plane. But we always want to think about functions, and we want to think about that this is really a method of approximating a complicated function by a simpler one. And this is very much like the story in uh, one variable calculus. What we can say is this is the graph of, it's not the graph of the function itself, but it's the graph of the linear approximation. 
L of xy, that's the handouts notation, L of xy is equal to 4x minus 1, or the uh, our main text notation uses t for tangent approximation. It's just a difference in letter, okay? It happens to not involve y here because the partial derivative with respect to y happened to be 0. Um, so that's a little special, but it it's really is always, in general, a function of x and y. It just doesn't happen to actually depend on y right here. So that's um, a, a function that if you plug that in, if you plug an x in here near 1, you're going to get something that's pretty close to the corresponding value of f. And so the statement can be how, why this is useful can be put in a very uh, succinct form. The real function is approximately the linear function, and that has a simple formula. Now it's that wave, those wavy lines that are the heart of all the subtleties. How good an approximation? Where? How do you define good? And let me remind you, uh, our main point is not the technicalities or the theorems, but let me remind you of a couple ways to say that. One is that the function is equal to its linear approximation plus, let me just make sure I'm using the notation from the handout, it would say um, you take the linear approximation and you get the right value of the function with some error that depends on delta x and delta y. And the assumption is that it's something times delta x plus something times delta y. So that automatically, just writing it this way, is going to mean that if delta x and delta y are small, this whole thing is going to be small. But then you actually require it to be even smaller than that. And this is the way the handout does it, where epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 both go to 0 as delta x and delta y both go to 0. And so you really have it sort of going to 0 sort of um, for two reasons. Both delta x and delta y are going to 0, and the epsilons are going to 0. So that's one way to write it. That's not exactly the equation that the book has. The way the book says is um, the change in z, which is f of x, y minus f of x naught, y naught, that's the actual change in z. We'd like to approximate that by just how much the linear approximation changes. And this, just like in one variable, has a nice name. The idealized change in the z variable is called dz. And by definition, that says what, what is the change you get if you follow the linear approximation. Well, the linear approximation says that I start at the base point and I add in exactly this stuff fx times delta x plus fy times delta y. And so this is fx delta x plus fy delta y. And that's going to be a very, very important expression for us because it's going to lead to the multivariable chain rule. Um, and so this is the idealized change in, in z. This is the actual change in z. And what you can do is you can recast this. You can say, OK. This L of xy is just this part plus f of x not y not. But now, and th this is just delta z times f of x not y not. So a very, very closely related form to this in terms of what does it mean to be good and differentiable is exactly what the book has, which is the change in z should be exactly what you're predicting linearly plus this error term that has a sort of the same shape. Something times delta x, here's something more times delta x. Something times delta y, here's something more times delta y. But with the proviso that those guys get really small and can be ignored, basically, as delta x and delta y go to 0. So uh, let me cut it here. And then in the next one, I'll show you uh, yet another version of that, which is the one in our main text. But it's very closely related.